Hello, welcome to another video from 3.5 Archive, and today we're going to be doing our 50th D&D 3.5 Prestige Class Review. And for our 50th Prestige Class Review, we're going to be doing the Gnome Giant Slayer. This is a Prestige Class for Gnomes from the Complete Warrior Sourcebook. And, uh, well, it's no secret that Gnomes and Giants have a bit of a mutual hatred in D&D 3.5, uh, gnomes get a bonus to armor class, like dwarves do, to dodge their attacks. And they love to be underfoot, teasing giants while slashing at their ankles uh, over and over until they eventually collapse in frustration. Uh, so this classic sort of David and Goliath uh, dynamic plays out even more in the Gnome Giant Slayer Prestige class. So to become a Gnome Giant Slayer, you're going to need to be a gnome, of course. You're going to need a plus five base attack bonus. You're going to need three ranks in escape artist. You're going to need to speak giant, and you're going to need three ranks in tumble. And then for feats, you're going to need dodge, mobility, and spring attack. So entering into this prestige class is going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, if you want to play as a fighter, you're going to be able to get the feats pretty easily. You're going to have to struggle a little bit with the cross-class skill ranks. You can definitely enter into this as a fighter rogue, multi-class, but you're going to have to wait until past level 5. Uh, you can come into this as a ranger fighter, which might be the best way to do it, because you're going to be able to take favored enemy giant, taking maybe 3 levels in ranger, 2 levels in fighter to be able to get those last 2 feats that you'd need, and still have a feat to spare, which you're probably going to want so that you can have something like weapon finesse to help you hit. Uh, overall, again, this prestige class's requirements would be considered fairly restrictive, uh, maybe not quite very restrictive, but the fact that you have to go into the dodge mobility spring attack feat tree when it doesn't really do a whole lot for you is going to be pretty frustrating. But if anything, it makes sense for this prestige class, more so than probably any other prestige class that requirement, requires it. Certainly a lot more than the Tempest prestige class, which requires all three of those feats just for a two-up and spring attack feature at level 5. That isn't very good at all. But in this case, uh, having mobility is going to make you able to really stack your armor class against these giants, as we will see. So the suggestion is to go in here three levels as ranger, picking giant as your favorite enemy, uh, and then two levels in fighter, allowing you to pick up mobility and spring attack, and also throw in weapon finesse, since you're probably going to be playing a high dex character. So what do you get as a gnome giant slayer? Well, you get a d10 hit die and full base attack bonus, which is excellent. This is going to be an upgrade if you're playing a ranger. And if you're playing a fighter rogue, it's going to be falling right along with your fighter hit dice, which is good because when you're dancing around under the blows of massive, you know, giant morning stars and war clubs and great swords, you're going to want to have a few extra hit points to spare. You're going to have a good fortitude save, which is a bit unusual. You might have expected fortitude and reflex, or at least just reflex, but no, you're getting fortitude as your good saving throw. That's fine. That is still helpful to have. And, you know, not having a good reflex save is probably one of the least damaging. Uh, you're going to get two plus intelligence modifier skill points, so almost certainly a downgrade, but that's okay. You're going to be able to keep up your escape artist and tumble, which will probably be your two most important skills. So what do you get as a gnome giant slayer for features? Well, you get favored enemy giant at level one, and this is going to improve at level four, level seven, and level 10. It's going to be similar to the, you know, ranger class feature, you're going to get plus two on your bluff, listen, sense, motive, spot, and survival checks, as well as on weapon damage rolls. And this is going to be really excellent, because by level 10, as a level 15 character, you're going to be doing plus 10 damage on all of your weapons uh, attack against giants. And being able to do that is going to give you a lot of flexibility while fighting them. Obviously, this prestige class, you should only really be taking where well, you're going to be fighting a lot of giants. But if you are, maybe you're playing in some sort of 3.5 conversion of the Against the Giants module um, or something of that sort. But if you are, you're going to be very deadly. Uh, even if you aren't a ranger going into this, having plus 8 damage by level 10 uh, is going to make you obviously extremely effective. Now at level 2, you gain the Crafty Fighter feature. This gives you a plus 4 dodge bonus to your armor class against giants. Uh, or a plus two dodge bonus against any other non-giant creature, at least two size categories larger than you. So large size in this case. And 
This may seem like a little bit of deja vu, since as a gnome you already get a plus 4 dodge bonus to your armor class against giants. Um, but this is going to stack with that, so you're going to be plus 8 armor class versus giants. And that is just excellent. Adding in your mobility feat, if you move through a giant space and provoke an opportunity attack, you're going to have plus 12 armor class against that above your normal AC, uh, which is really great. At level 3, you're going to gain Slippery. Uh, if you're grappled by a creature at least two size categories larger, you can add your class level as a bonus on any checks made to escape grappling. You can also move through a, an area occupied by a creature two size categories larger than you uh, without any issue. Um, normally, you can only do that if they're three size categories larger. So this allows you to just kind of move right through a giant space, which makes sense as you're going to be great at being underfoot in this case. And you don't even need to make a tumble check. At level 5, after you get a uh, plus 4 favorite enemy against giants at level 4, uh, you're going to gain close shot at level 5. This means that you no longer provoke opportunity attacks from giants for using a ranged weapon while threatened by them. This is useful, and I suppose if you do want to be using a ranged weapon, that's not a bad idea. Um, in a lot of ways, melee is going to be more consistent, able to do more damage, but if you want to use a ranged weapon, that's great too. Um, as for why you wouldn't just stand further back is another question for another time. Um, but being able to just stand there and, you know, fling bolts, uh, darts, shooting crossbow bolts, shooting arrows, whatever, is going to be uh, nice. You won't get hit by the giant's clubs that way. At level 6, you're going to gain fast movement, which is going to increase your base speed by 10 feet, as long as you're not wearing uh, armor heavier than medium and not ha carrying a heavy load. Uh, and this will be nice, this will help you stay a little bit ahead of giants, although you're still going to be slower than they are. Uh, it's a nice little feature to toss in, but it's not particularly relevant to giants, it's just another sort of side feature. At level 7, you're going to gain plus 6 favorite enemy against giants, so now you're doing some really crazy damage against them, just for, you know, being there. And this is something a case where you might want to consider, you know, doing range attacks if you didn't want to invest in... Um, Weapon finesse, you could invest in point blank and rapid shot instead and make the most of that, you know, plus six to eventually plus eight to damage against giants. At level eight, you're going to gain improved mobility. This is going to give you plus four dodge bonus when moving out of or within a giant's threatened area, uh, which is going to stack with your bonus for mobility. So this is a little bit, you know, useless in that the close shot feature is going to negate a lot of opportunity attacks but if you are moving you know out of a giant space for some reason or through it uh, you're going to get plus eight total to your ac between mobility and this feature now it's not really that useful but it is kind of fun to think that moving through a giant space you're going to get an extra plus 16 to your armor class and be essentially unhittable as for the purpose of this it's kind of hard to figure out um Maybe some kind of skirmish ability would be nice here, or something of that sort. Uh, it's kind of hard to understand the tactical uh, point here, but if you do want to just get out of melee with the giant, move back and throw some darts at them, this is a good way to do it. Um, but then they can just, you know, move right up to you and hit you again. Admittedly, they won't be full attacking, so that helps, but then again, neither will you. So at level 9, you're going to gain Annoying Strike. Whenever a Gnome Giant Slayer damages a giant in melee, that giant is shaken for one round with no saving throw. Uh, so this is a pretty good feature. Unfortunately, it's hard to find other ways to, you know, stack on another shaken condition to make the giant frightened of you, which one might make fun of the giant for, but if you were being attacked by a knee-high creature that was dashing between your ankles and slashing at them, you would probably be a little bit scared too. Um, this is nice. I mean, it is a debuff on an attack. It would be nice if you got this at lower levels where it was a little bit more effective. Giants already have such huge attack bonuses that your dodge bonuses to AC are already going to be struggling to keep up. Um, but it's a nice feature to have. It's certainly an interesting one. It would just be nice if it came on earlier. Finally, at level 10, you're going to gain defensive roll. Uh, this is similar to the rogue feature. Uh, once a day when you'd be reduced to zero or fewer hit points, you can make a reflex save against a DC equal to the damage dealt. Um, you add your class level as a bonus to the saving throw on top of your normal reflex bonus. And if your save succeeds, you only take half damage from the attack, which still might knock you out or kill you, but at least it gives you a chance to uh, potentially save yourself. This is a good way to keep your character alive, and I suppose if you get critically hit by a giant, 
it very well might save your life and protect you from a ton of damage, given the uh, prodigious strength that giants tend to have and the equally prodigious damage bonuses. Um, and your uh, you know, evasion and improved evasion features aren't going to apply to this, of course. So that's the features for the Gnome Giant Slayer. So let's take a look at this prestige class overall. It gives you a lot of armor class bonuses against giants. Um, it gives you another flat plus four against them. The other one requires you to be provoking attacks of opportunity, which you're getting from your mobility feat, uh, a plus four as well. So you will be getting some pretty crazy armor class while moving through giant squares, but the prestige class doesn't really give you any reason to be doing that. Um, yeah, it helps you move, you know, into their reach, but it's already easy to do that with a tumble check. Um, it's usually just a DC 15 tumble check to move, you know, through a threatened square and get right up into melee. So instead of, you know, risking an attack of opportunity, you might as well just make that tumble check and hopefully get right up in melee. I guess if you fail a DC 15 tumble check, which could happen once in a while, then you're going to want these features to, you know, help you evade the consequent attack of opportunity. But, you know, that's the sort of thing that you just want to be avoiding in general. If there was some sort of uh, feature here that gave you, you know, maybe double your favorite enemy damage if you were in the uh, giant's square while you made the attack, like an ankle slasher type of ability, that would have made more sense than close shot. Fast movement's nice, but it really could have needed two helpings to really make you able to kind of kite giants and stay out of their reach. Um, the very fast progressing favorite enemy giant is the main reason to take this prestige class along with the crafty fighter feature. Um, it's really hard to find fighter feats that are going to be giving you a total of plus eight to your damage, uh, you know, notwithstanding equivalent damage bonuses from attack bonuses mixed with power attack. Uh, it's going to be a little bit less useful to you as a gnome. Uh, even so, uh, this prestige class is definitely worth taking if you are going to specialize in fighting giants. You may only want to take two levels. You may only want to take four levels. Um, it would be a lot nicer if the annoying strike feature came earlier. Um, overall, this prestige class, I would say, gets four stars for concept and three stars for execution. It's, it's fairly average. It gives you one really excellent feature and another pretty excellent one in the crafty fighter, giving you that dodge bonus to armor class. Um, again, it would be nice if there was some sort of reason for you to be make, provoking all these opportunity attacks, but as is, it's a decent prestige class for what it is, and I would suggest taking two or four, or if you want to go all out, 10 levels in this prestige class. So that's about it for this D&D 3.5 prestige class review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time here on 3.5 Archive.